Hello, hello, and welcome back to a new video. Sorry for this little delay. I have been filming quite a lot over the past weeks, but I've had some troubles with the editing software that I'm using. So yeah, this caused a little delay in uploading, but uh, don't worry, I've been filming, I've been collecting memories. This video starts right after World Indoor Champs, and because of traveling so much in the coming weeks and also my work, I decided not to go on a training camp to altitude, but to do an altitude training camp at home, and this was the setup. It's time again to go camping. Well, actually this time we're not really camping or we're trying not to camp. What I mean is sleeping in an altitude tent and you see behind me is our unmade bed, but no tent. And that is because we are trying some, something new this season. So can you see this? So yeah, we actually bought a different door to being able to drill a hole through this one. I now taped it up already to have the um, the tube through that and then put the whole room on altitude. That is the aim. I was a bit distracted <laughs> before, but essentially we have this little device that is made for measuring air quality and therefore it also measures percentage of um, oxygen in the air in the room where it is placed. So um, we use it to see how much yeah, oxygen is in the room and therefore you can compare it to the altitude that we are at. So uh, we use it for that. Um, I'm currently setting it up. Setting it up. <laughs> I'm currently setting it up. And then I will launch the generator and see how long it takes because, yeah, we have lots of unknown with the tent. We were sure yet how it works, how long it takes to fill up and stuff like that. And now with it being the whole room, we don't really know. And we also don't know how like airtight <laughs> the room is. We'll have to see how long it takes um, to set everything up. Uh, so, yeah. I'm currently trying to set the device up and then we'll see how it goes. But yeah, that is now, um, that will be reality for the next four weeks. And I really, really hope that uh, this works with the room and that we don't have to set up the tent because that would mean, yeah, a lot less humidity in the room, a lot less like, ugh, I just don't like the tent. So yeah. So this is the setup, the generator is down there, uh, down there, <laughs> out there. We have the tube, the cable for the electricity, and then we have the tube going all the way into the other room. And I hope that, yeah, it will fill up. <sighs> that it will work. I took three days off after World Indoor Champs and then got right back into training. This is because the outdoor season starts very, very soon, very, very early compared to last year. Most importantly, European Championships are already on the beginning of June and the qualification window for the Paris Olympics ends on June 30th. So you have to be in shape quickly. So that's why we decided not to do a long off season or a longer off season between indoors and outdoors. This training block, sleeping in an altitude tent, we focused on endurance, back to threshold, back to basics, lots of yeah hills at threshold, threshold, uh, just to build somewhat of a base again after indoors. And I also did my first ever three hour bike ride. Uh, I never have ridden a bike for that long outdoors, also not indoors, but I've never went on a, such a long bike ride. And because it was still cold outside, I decided to prep a bit for that. Good morning! It's Sunday morning. I'm getting ready for a two to three hour bike ride. I know, who am I? <laughs> I was supposed to have that bike ride yesterday and a typical long run today on a Sunday, but um, I visited a friend yesterday and it was just easier to do a, a run there than, uh, yeah, three-hour bike ride. So as it's 
cold outside. It's not as cold anymore, but it is still cold. Let me check the temperature. Yeah, nine degrees Celsius. So not as cold, but still cold. I googled to prep uh, <laughs> for my <laughs> bike ride, so I don't get too cold and especially not my feet. So I've read that you can put Vaseline, Vaseline, Vaseline on them and use tin foil. <laughs> so I will do that. I will also put some Vaseline on my legs. I unfortunately don't have heating cream because otherwise I would have done that. But yeah, I will try it and I will report if it actually works and if I survive this ride without getting cold feet. <laughs> March 17th. That was a date I put into my calendar because that is a local road race where you can run 5k, 10k and a half marathon organized by my track club. I live in the same town as my track club has yeah, the track so it is really local local for me. I run these roads every day for training for the past 20 plus years so it is really like my home track club, my home roads, uh, as you could say. And to keep this endurance training block a bit more fun, we decided let's go for it. Let's try to tackle the 10K road national record. That was kind of a big task because um, I've never really prepared for a 10k and not that I really prepared for this one but I've never raced a 10k where I felt like I was in in a good shape we usually race a 10k at the beginning of the season in November where everything still feels a bit off and you're never like that yeah that good prepared or that well prepared as you would hope so this 10k race I really put into my calendar and was like, yes, okay, let's try. It's at home, like, just go for it. And I had a very good pacer. Uh, we set everything up. So I did one specific session for the 10K and that was in horrible conditions. It was rain from start to finish, felt like running in a shower. It wasn't that fun and it didn't feel that good. So I was not that confident going into the race, I have to say. And as I told you, I've never really nailed the 10k distance. I've always struggled, even with looking at my threshold paces, I've never was able to produce like not the same effort, but to produce the same quality as my threshold paces would indicate in a 10k. So I had a pacer from our group. Um, one other guy from the group uh, ran with us. So we were a small little group and I just focused on following Gilles and I didn't look at my watch once. <laughs> I trusted him fully and I committed fully and it was such a good experience. Ali, Ali! In aller Feierung aus der Schmiede, der Land ist gekommen und eine Minute gebracht. Bravo, Vera! I have to say, the 10k distance still scares me, and I know that this experience that I had was very, very like <laughs> picture perfect. Um, I couldn't have, yeah, wished for something better. Um, I ran 30. 347 which is a new national record um, and I was prepared to hurt quite early on I was really in my mind okay it could start hurting at 2k already and what do you do then you just commit 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 but it started hurting or it started getting uncomfortable at 7k 
and then the last 2k were really a grind that was really where i suffered and the last k the last k is also not the easiest runnable because you have to run it's a flat course and when i say uphill it's not really uphill but yeah you run kind of uphill into more of a like area where people live and then you have to take some turns and the last 300 meters are on the track i had no idea about the time so when i crossed the finish line i was very very happy very very relieved um and that was such a confidence booster because as you know my indoor season it was still a good indoor season a solid one but the times didn't really the times didn't really show what i trained for and i know you can't compare 10k with a 1500 but i do know okay the work you've put in especially in the endurance area has it's really there and you can do something with it hello hello it's the day after Ah, I just came back from my easy run. Mondays are always our recovery days. I had one hour of just easy running and then I had five strides and yeah, during the easy run I felt better and better. Of course not good, but the strides, oof, they felt crusty rusty. <laughs> uh, I have, yeah, around 24 hours until my next run my next training session uh, on mondays we always just have one session so yeah i have plenty more time to recover but oh <laughs> compared to yesterday how fast i ran today felt so sluggish but oh well it is kind of a beautiful day the blue sky spring is coming I can feel it and it's it feels really really good. A couple days later I picked up the camera again and thought okay this will be fun I will document a whole day and that was on a Thursday and Wednesday I did a really solid threshold session double threshold session actually and Wednesday evening on the cool down I already started feeling my but like my hamstring butt area and a bit of like oh this feels tight but i was cooling down i didn't really think much of it and then when i woke up on thursday i already thought hmm i feel like i have to mobilize my hip hamstring gluteal area in order to go for a run and i often run before work so i get up and i run and yeah you usually feel a bit more stiff because you've been sleeping and then you basically get up and start running so i took some time to mobilize but i had the camera with me and i didn't feel much because i wasn't enjoying the run because my leg felt so stiff and so like blocked in the range of motion that it yeah, I couldn't really do my stride as I wanted to. I also didn't do the strides that I was supposed to do because it felt like, oh, my legs, my left leg isn't moving the way I want it to move. Good morning. It's Tuesday. No, it's Thursday morning. I'm on an easy run. And look at the weather. It's blue skies. So nice. This morning I have 9k, so coach got a little adventurous and put 9k instead of 8 or 10 to keep it exciting. <laughs> yeah, when you're alone and all the lights turn off because no one is walking around in here. I just finished 45 minutes on the bike. Yeah, little change of plans. I was supposed to do an easy run to finish off the day, but somehow since this morning my left leg is a bit hurting, is hurting a bit. Um, so change of plans and I just switched my easy run to the bike. Um, I already had a physio looking at my leg. Don't think it's anything bad or big, but just being cautious and not needing to force anything. I have a physio appointment tomorrow as well and I think yeah it's it will be fine but 
I won't risk it for the biscuit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, 45 minutes on the bike and I did um, a bit of prehab prehab before that, everything that I was able to do. And now I'll go turn on the lights again because they work with, there you go, <laughs> they work automatically. So now it's time to clean up and get the hell out of here. So this is very, very new that some of us have their personal lockers and I can show you. This is right outside of the entrance to the gym, to the gym where I just been. And on the other side is the recovery part where um, there's a place to eat, to relax, uh, some bunk beds um, and then also all the recovery tools like um, a whirlpool and infrared sauna, cryotherapy. So yeah, it is really the place to be here to train and to relax. So that was Thursday. I got some treatment on Friday, even already Thursday evening, and my leg was feeling fine Friday. Saturday I ran totally normal. It was a horrible weather condition run. Um, ran in hail and everything so I didn't really feel <laughs> much anyways I have to say and then Sunday I did a long run a really solid long run everything was feeling fine Monday morning I wake up same thing wanted to go for a run before work and yeah my leg isn't really cooperating the way I wanted to um, so I cut the run short because Mondays I only have one run so um, I decided, okay, I, yeah, after 2K, I, I stopped again and thought, okay, maybe I have to treat this. Um, and after being on my legs the whole day, maybe this evening it will be fine. Yeah, went to the chiropractor, nothing really changed um, and the leg wasn't feeling that fine. So I opted for a swim in the evening and um, didn't run on that day. Tuesday tried to run again, but it wasn't feeling that great, but also not that bad. It was just that my I felt like I Needed to think about moving my leg forward and it wasn't like a natural motion and it was constrict like the motion the range of motion was just Constricted. I don't know if that's the right word. So Yeah, wasn't ideal um, but Tuesday I doubled with some easy running and then uh, Wednesday I had double threshold again. The morning session, the warm-up felt terrible, but it was still like, it wasn't painful, but it was just that, yeah, as I told you, the range of motion was not there. Running faster, running at threshold was fine. It was always the first 100 meters that felt a bit off, but once I got into the stride of faster running, fine. And then, yeah. We go to the evening session and that's when things weren't so fun anymore. Oh, I'd like to cry. It's Wednesday evening and I'm on the bike because my leg hurts too much to finish the threshold session and I'm very annoyed. On Thursdays, I always see my physio with whom I do some prehab rehab work. So Friday evening, Bob and I decide, okay, we'll take things slowly now. Um, not running for four days. Um, so I, the plan was to take Thursday, Friday, and then the weekend off of running and see how it is after that. Then I went to my physio on Thursday. I yeah, did um, some swimming in the morning and the physio looked at it and he was like, I don't really know what this could be. And I was starting to get a bit worried because as you probably know, or you've experienced yourself, once something feels off and it doesn't go away, you start to think a lot about it and you start to wonder what it could be and you start to try to feel like, yeah, see what it feels like inside and I started feeling 
like oh this could be bad because it was in my gluteal like yeah my butt area hip area and i thought this could be something bony so we organized a doctor's appointment on friday good morning it's friday morning i'm in the recovery part at the cook where we can sit down relax eat something and so on um i'm killing some time because i have an appointment to go on the in-body measurement where you measure muscle mass uh, body fat percentage and stuff like that and in the mornings to come here to the training center it's always like a hit or miss either you leave 10 minutes early and you need the right amount of time or you leave 10 minutes later and you need double the amount so either you're here early <laughs> or you're stuck in traffic so i decided to be here early um yeah and then i will go and do some aqua jogging which i'm not looking forward that much okay quick little update I have an MRI appointment on Tuesday as Monday is public holiday here for Easter so yeah after Tuesday I should know more so a few days more of cross training of not putting any impact on my lower body so if something is up then we already have one week of rest banked but yeah fingers crossed so that was the plan and the grind on the bike and aqua jogging started I just did five times 12 minutes sub threshold oh god look at the state of me oh that was not fun <laughs> that was not fun but you know what was my mantra? It's not fun, but it will be worth it. So that's what I was telling myself. And I should have turned the camera on earlier because that is actually quite a good motivation there. But yeah, I have four more minutes to pull down and then I can call this a day. I will join the others in the sports hall uh, after if they done their session to do some core so I'm not all by myself but yeah it was a good day of training lots of cardio but exactly what I can do right now so better than nothing okay it's Wednesday morning I just went to the doctors um, after my MRI yesterday and the good thing is I don't have a stress fracture um, I don't have a stress reaction, my bones are okay. Um, I do have tendinopathy in my hamstrings and some kind of a syndrome where, like some kind of impingement syndrome near my hip. So um, I can run, <laughs> which is a good thing. Um, but yeah, I still need to treat this and... Um, see what I can do. I have to talk to my physio. But all in all, it's good news. I know I don't look happy. I'm just a bit frustrated and realize more and more that high performance sports is for sure not um, leisure and uh, sports for health, <laughs> uh, which sucks a bit because I, yeah. I feel like my body is a bit crumbling. But I need to look on the positive side. I Nothing is broken. And I have had tendinopathies in the past. And I've been pretty good at managing that kind of injury. So yeah, I'll do my best. But <sighs> good news and still a bit frustrated. You've just seen the clip right after I got the MRI results and looking back at it I'm happy that I decided to pull out the camera and film something 
I felt really defeated. Um, and I know I should have felt so relieved, which I also felt relieved, but I felt defeated because the like what they saw on the MRI was like this big of a text. And even though nothing really bad is happening, like nothing is really wrong or broken, <laughs> there's still quite a lot that is like not in a good condition. And I felt quite defeated because I'm 27 years young. <laughs> And I know I've been doing this sport for quite a while, um, but it's just, yeah, it def it felt like my body is crumbling um, beneath me and I know I can still run and you will see in the next episode and I can also tell you already now that things are good and I'm preparing for my, my first race, but it is still not the case that I wake up in the morning and I feel like, oh, let's go for a run. I feel so fresh and so like nothing is hurting because that's not the case. And that is what is a bit eye-opening and feels like defeat because yeah, this sport that we do, it is essentially not really healthy. And um, yeah, I keep repeating myself and I don't want to end on a negative note. I just wanted to explain the feelings that I felt in that moment because they are not really I should have felt way more happy so things are really looking well at the moment I'm very happy with where I'm at at training and I'm preparing for my first race soon which will be in the next video so I didn't want to end off the, the video on a negative note um, so you can be excited for the next one and you will see lots more running clips and a lot of yeah, more fun content. Until then, see you. Bye-bye.